those long stretches of I-15 down in southern Utah, all of a sudden they looked like a Maynard Dixon painting. Hi, my name is Sarah Wilson. I'm here at the beautiful BYU Museum of Art, and I'm so excited to talk about one of my favorite artists, Maynard Dixon, and this painting here, Mesas in Shadow. As a student here at BYU, I would come and visit this very painting so often. I loved Maynard Dixon. I loved his, his just expert composition, the way that he's able to put shapes together and craft them so carefully so that they harmoniously work together. I loved his vibrant colors. And what I really loved is that Maynard Dixon really shaped and helped me to see the beauty of my, my home, the Utah desert. He helped me to see those nuances in the desert that I had never really noticed before for and the beauty of that. You can tell that he just loves the landscape, he loves the earth, he loves this place and it really exudes from his painting and it was contagious to me. After seeing his work I decided that I wanted to be a landscape painter, I wanted to go and see the things that he had seen and paint like he painted. So that's when I started plein air painting. Plein air painting is a French term. It means open air, and it's just what it sounds like. It's to go out into the outdoors and paint. So I pack up my supplies, my brushes, my paints, and I'm just out in, in the wilderness painting and be able to be inspired by the landscape before me. Plein air started really when artists figured out how to make their paint portable. So before that, they were having to mix and grind their pigments in their studios, having to mix in the oils and make their paint on studio. So they really were constrained to that space. And then there was the invention of the aluminum tube where artists figured out they could put their paint in that and make it portable and travel with them wherever they wanted to go. The whole world became basically their studio on which they could work and what they could be inspired by. Because of the ability to travel with their paint and being able to observe natural light, artists became a lot more interested in that ephemeral quality of light within, the, within nature. They were far more interested in color and how the weather changed and how nature really looked under natural lighting conditions. Movements like um, French Impressionism really were started because of this ability to take their paint and take their supplies outdoors. I love plein air painting because I love our Utah mountains, I love nature, I love being outdoors, I love hiking, and I also, probably most importantly, love painting. And so it's just kind of this beautiful combination of all of those things. It is really just a really fun experience for me to be outdoors making art. So Maynard Dixon, this piece, Mesas in Shadow, was likely not a plein air piece. I doubt he did it on location, but plein air was definitely part of his artist's process. And you can tell that because he, just the way that he is so intimately familiar with how the light reacts within the desert landscape. It almost feels as if you are present, you are in this space, and that's because of his intimate knowledge of the space and how the light works within that. He's done a lot of study and a lot of careful observation in plein air. So there are several issues that us as landscape painters we run into. There are problems, um, and one of them being that when we are painting the landscape, we are not painting the mesa or the ground or the cloud. We're actually painting the light that's being reflected off of that into our eyes. And we have a limitation and that limitation is our paint. Paint doesn't make light on its own. So it becomes a challenge in how to create this sense of light within a painting when your medium doesn't emit light. And Maynard Dixon is really a master at this. We feel this luminance within his painting and I kind of want to talk through a few of the tactics that he is using to accomplish that. First of all, he's using contrast. So contrast in light and dark. We can't understand how light this is until we pair it with darkness. Um, and you see this pairing also in the darkness of the mesas in the background here with the foreground of this really bright, uh, saturated oranges and reds. It feels very, very light because of the pairing with the darkness behind it. Secondly, he's using contrast in color as well. 
So we don't understand red until we pair it with its complement, the color green, um, just as we can't understand light without darkness. And so he's, in order to intensify that redness, he's paired it with the sagebrush here, the green sagebrush. And you see these color pairings all throughout the painting. And the dark, rich blues in the background here, we see these little bits of oranges popping and coming through, which really intensifies that blue. And then lastly, there's almost this violet and the shadow of the cloud here, and he's paired that with its complement, yellow. And so those, those pairs really make all of those colors feel a lot more bright and vivid than if they were to be on their own. Maynard Dixon is also using a tactic called the optical color mixing. And so I wanna kinda of zoom in on this little area here of the cloud to explain what that is. If you notice, there are lots of oranges and yellows and purples and blues. It is not just one kind of bright white color. There's a whole rainbow of colors in there. And so if you understand how light works, the color white actually reflects all of the colors. So it makes sense that Maynard Dixon is putting all of these, this rainbow of colors into the white to make it feel more bright and more luminous. What your brain does is it then takes this, uh, this whole rainbow of colors, mixes them together in your head as you step back to observe it. And you'll see a lot of that within his sagebrush as well. It's not just one color green, he's putting blues and yellows next to each other. And as we step back, it feels green. And it creates a lot more vibrance in that uh, sagebrush than it would be if it was just one color that was flat. The next tactic that uh, Maynard Dixon is using is he really understands the physics of light. When light comes down, it's coming from the sky, it's hitting the earth, it's not just sitting there, it's actually bouncing around. Um, and so things that are close to each other, objects that are close to each other, those colors will actually interact with each other and, and affect the color that they are. So if we look, the light comes down, it bounces back on this red earth and it bounces and reflects back up into the shadows of the sagebrush. So you see these little indications of red in the shadow of the brush and that's just to indicate how intense that light is, that it's, it's actually reflecting back up into the brush. It's even so intense that it's bouncing up into the sky above, into the shadow of this cloud, we see these reds and pinks coming through. He's indicating that the sun is so harsh that it's actually being reflected right back up into the sky, which I think is really cool because it kind of shows this relationship between the atmosphere and the earth. Not only is the, uh, the shadow of the cloud falling upon the earth, but the earth is then also kind of giving back up into the, into the cloud as well. Lastly, I want to talk about another challenge that artists have, and that is that when we look out into the landscape, there is just an immense amount of detail. If you wanted to spend a lifetime just on one scene like this, you could paint every twig, every rock, every shadow in those mesas. You could spend so much time trying to get all those details. But that's not really what we're trying to accomplish as painters. And I think especially Maynard Dixon, what he's trying to do is to tell a story, is to create a narrative. And it's really fun as we look at his paintings, we can kind of piece apart what he's trying to focus on, what he's simplifying um, in order to propel that story, to propel that narrative. Storytelling isn't really something that we often think when we're looking at a landscape painting, especially when there's not a figure to kind of place ourselves in there, but there's definitely a story happening here. And I wanna dive into some of the choices that Maynard Dixon has made so that we can understand that story that he's telling. First of all, he's put in a low horizon line and all that does is it focuses our attention upward. The majority of this painting is taken up by the sky and so that's really his emphasis here is these large clouds. Secondly, he's put a lot of contrast between this brightness on top of the cloud and we can see coming through on the rim here and then the darkness below. I would say this shadow here is probably even emphasized or exaggerated. And what that does as a viewer, when you're looking at this, you feel this um, sense that there is something far bigger above me. There's a towering structure of cloud, far more than we can see on this painting. And it's dense. And that density is also shown through the darkness of the mesas here, that there's miles and miles of the desert landscape that is being covered with shadow 
because of these large clouds. The story that Maynard Dixon is showing us is the power and the majesty of the landscape. How immense and large and intimidating these clouds are. And what I love is that he's placed us as the viewer we are in the direct sunlight, right? The foreground here is really illuminated, but we're on the precipice of something. Something is changing, something is about to happen. We've all had that feeling of we're standing in direct sunlight and then all of a sudden a shadow comes over us as a cloud moves across the sun. We know what that feels like. It's dark suddenly and also there's a immense change in the temperature. It suddenly becomes much cooler. And Maynard Dixon is also indicating this with the colors that he's using, which I love. He's using these really, really warm reds, oranges, and yellows in the foreground. It feels really hot, but in the distance, it's very cool, lots of blues. And so both visually, he's showing that temperature change, and it's visceral. We can almost feel that about to happen to us physically. I really hope that I've been able to give you some insight into Maynard Dixon's work and maybe you have a little bit more love for this artist. I encourage you to come and visit the rest of this exhibition. It's absolutely stunning. Thank you.